Every time you try to commit suicide, they put you in a psych ward for observation. Usually three to four days, sometimes 17 if they get you long to stay. But 17 is the longest they can hold you in our state for attempted suicide. Um, but they do take you for attempted suicide when they catch you. I've been in 57, 57, 57 mental hospitals in our area. Some of them repeatedly. But this is all for attempted suicide. After four days, they're rule and, and realize that I'm not a threat to myself or others. That I'm not a threat to myself or others. And release me. I spent a lot of time in paddle wall rooms. Growing up around five years old, my mother had a boyfriend named Chuck. Chuck, one night when he was babysitting me at the apartment buildings on Ferry Street, Bellingham, Washington, he pulled the covers back and he played with my personal privates for a very long time. I kept pulling the pants up and trying to pull the covers over me and he'd pull them back down forcefully and grab me and play with me longer. I pretended to be asleep so that I wouldn't get raped. I was five. I was scared. Powerless. Completely powerless for the situation. Chuck had all the control. All the control. Mother was at work. No one helped me. So the next day in my mom's car I was reluctant to tell her what happened because I was embarrassed or scared that it would happen again or that I'd get in trouble for it. I told her, she told me, Chuck will be watching you again tonight. And I said, no, no, Mom. She said, don't tell me no. I said, no, he can't. She said, what do you mean? He can't. I said, he touched me. She said, I call bullshit. We're going to him right now. So I faced my accused, my attacker. I faced him as a five-year-old little boy with my mother in the doorway of our apartment building. And she said, this little boy, Ben tells me that you touched him. And he said back, what a fucking little liar. I didn't fucking touch him. And she looked at me and said, see, he didn't touch you. After 10 minutes of talking to Chuck, five-year-old talking to Chuck, the grown man. He was on a field position on the floor, on the floor, on the floor, sobbing and admitting that he touched me. Field position. Coward of a man. Yeah, he touched me. CBS came to my school with a doll to embarrass me and scare me. So I go to the principal's office. Well, I know all the bad kids go to the principal's office. So I was terrified. I was terrified. At the office, and they had a doll. Show us where he touched you. I should have pointed out the private parts. They said, okay, we have nothing we need to know now, and that's all we need to know. And nothing more came of it. Chuck so was let go to go and do this to other families. My grandmother passed. She left me first ten cut of her will which means I get equal shares from my uncles and aunts and mom. Me and my grandmother pulled up to the cabin, which is in Cushman, to discuss having my mother become the will representative. Me and grandma, it was grandma's idea. She wanted to take me to interview them for the job. We talked to them for a while. They said, I'm going to go inside and discuss it. Grandma told me, hey, Ben, go listen to the windows. Find out what's going on. I was at the window. My mom and dad were going to take it all from the whole family. I can't ask grandma. I said, Grandma, they're going to take it from everybody. I said, Grandma, they're going to take it from everybody. She said, Ben, we're leaving now. Not saying goodbye. We're just leaving. I said, Leaving. It's okay, Grandma. Got in the car. Drove to my old Craig, where she left him to be world representative. He was in care. Make sure everybody got their money in the family. Everybody got their money in the family. Except for me. When it came to me. When it came to me. My mother gave me a little bit of money uh, out of hand so I could have some food to uh, live off of while I was homeless. And my mother convinced my uncle to make her the world representative of just me. Just me. Just me. Just me. 
Well, everyone else in the family got their their cut because I was there to make sure they did. Then it was up to my turn. The one person looked out for them. And my money was wrapped up in a house that wasn't really for me. You see, my mom wanted the property badly. It was by her other property in Cushman. She invested in it so she could default to the bank and buy it for nearly nothing so she could have it for herself. I spent $53,000 on a property that I just lost. And I lost it. Why? Because in the will it states my mother or the representative has to pay taxes for it out of my money. She didn't pay one dollar, not one dollar on my taxes on purpose. To make sure I lost my, my cabin and property to the bank so she could buy it for low. What she didn't realize was that once the will representative is the one the person that invests the money, she can never own what I bought. It's the law. So I probably was taking it for nothing.